Hello, I'm Eve Engelbright. Egyptian chronologists know their dates are off by at least 100 years. Recognizing Heka Kepera Shishank 2A is the Bible's Shishak, not Hedge Kepera Shishank I, will help resolve their problems. I love to solve puzzles, and yellow is my favorite color. One Christmas, my mom bought me a solid yellow rectangular puzzle. It took me months to put together. The first step was to sort out the pieces, those with straight edges from those without. For today's analogy, the straight edged pieces are facts and other pieces are assumptions and opinions. The four corner pieces are analogous to historical synchronisms. Champion correctly identified the hieroglyphic and hieratic scripts were used by scribes and Demotic was used by the people, and they both were the same Egyptian language. In 1822, he published his translation of parts of the Rosetta Stone. Six years later, at the Jubilee Hall of Shishank I, he misread a captured city's hieroglyphs as Judah's king for Jerusalem and declared the following. This matches the commentary in 1 Kings 14, which recounts the successful arrival of Shishank at Jerusalem. The identity that we have established of Shishak of the Bible is confirmed in the most satisfactory manner. The problem was Champagnon was wrong and all the chronologies used his synchronism of the plundering of Jerusalem by Shishank I. It was neither a synchronism nor a fact, but a false assumption. How do I know? Because the family of Shishank I is described in 1 Kings 11 as living before a different pharaoh named Shishak, who is later mentioned in the same chapter. Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him to wife, the sister of his own wife, the sister of Topanes, the queen. And the sister of Topanes bore him Genubath, his son, whom Topanes weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Genubath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. And when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam, and Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt to Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Topanes has three of the four syllables of Patareshnes, the wife of Shishank I, and they had at least two sons. Our first synchronism comes from the Bible's description of Shishank I's family prior to the mention of Shishank in 1 Kings 11. The photo shows the portion of the alabaster canopic chest with the cartouches of Hedge Kepera Shishank, whom Egyptologists numbered one. It's most likely that Hadad, the Prince of Edom, told Shishank I the names of Israel's cities to get vengeance on King David for killing his people. Then Jeroboam told Shishak a few more cities which were added to the wall's corners to get vengeance on King Solomon. This artifact was found in Byblos in 1895. It's the base of a small throne upon which sat a statue of Shishank I. Kings who traded with Egypt exchanged signed statues with each other at this time. Shishank I exchanged statues with King Abibal of Byblos, known for its cedar trees. Abibal, king of Byblos, is written in Phoenician. Hedge Kepera Shishank is in cartouches. Abibal's son, Hiram was the king of Tyre with whom kings David and Solomon did business. According to Josephus, 
Meander of Ephesus wrote, When Abibal was dead, his son Hiram received the kingdom from him, who, when he had lived fifty-three years, reigned thirty-four. So Hiram was nineteen when he became sole king of Tyre and helped David build his palace. Josephus continued in his Antiquities of the Jews, Now that year on which the temple began to be built was already the eleventh year of the reign of Hiram, when he was thirty years old. This was in the fourth year of Solomon's reign, which Bishop Usher calculated was in 1011 BC. Although this is a biblical fact for me, it is a chronological point of contention for others, so not a corner piece. Using Usher's dates, the fifth year of Rehoboam would be 970 BC, when Shishak looted the treasures of Solomon's temple. A person would expect such a pharaoh to have tomb artifacts of silver and gold like those of Shishank IIa. Though the tomb of Shishank I has not been found, we do have one canopic chest made of alabaster from his tomb. But the ones pictured besides the silver coffin of Shishank IIa are all silver. To review, our four facts for recognizing the Bible's Shishak is Heka Kepera Shishank IIa, not Hedge Kepera Shishank I, are as follows. The description of Shishank I's family during David's reign is prior to mention of Jeroboam fleeing to Shishak during Solomon's reign in 1 Kings 11. A physical artifact with the engraved names of Abibal and Shishank I show they were contemporary. Kings David and Solomon bought timber from Abibal's son, Hiram. Gold and silver tomb objects of Shishank IIa are a better fit for the Shishak who looted Solomon's temple. The central enemy on Shishank's victory wall would have been a king of Israel, but the image was changed. Shishank I did go and demand tribute from the first dozen city names on his wall, including Megiddo, but maybe he became too sick or injured to continue his campaign. So his son, Hekakepera, campaigned in Canaan to honor his father. The jeweled pectoral on Hekakepera's mummy bore the inscription of his father, Shishank, great chief of Ma. The two bracelets bore his father's throne name. The curse tablet found on Mount Ebal should restore the high chronology used prior to the minimalist movement which began in 1970. Correcting Egypt's chronology will also eliminate blank spots in the chronologies of other countries. Using the high chronology of the Bible will restore correlations among archaeological sites. Agreeing to use high chronology and working together instead of against each other should promote faster and better field results. A more accurate picture of history will help many scientists make better predictions of the future. You will find my interactive timeline at pharaohsofthebible.com. Both volumes of Pharaohs of the Bible are available at amazon.com. Thank you.